everybody, I'm Laura Bella, your host here at Ready, Jet, Set, Go! Here at Ready, Jet, Set, Go! we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in travel. So I am a Neuro Linguistic Programming Practitioner and um, Clinical Hypnotherapist and uh, we want to make sure that you're actually ready for whatever circumstances that can happen to you or like uh, after you have traveled we want to make sure as well that you're taken care of because like any negative uh, lingering emotions can affect you like um, in any other things which is uh, about your life and um, today uh, I have invited a special guest so he is actually a senior rehab counselor for the state of Illinois and so um, hello Domingo how are you Pretty good. how are you yeah long time no see <laughs> <laughs> so Domingo is actually my husband and um, like uh, maybe uh, you can tell us um, where was your last trip well if I'm not mistaken uh, my last trip was to uh, Israel and Spain oh. In Israel, about nine days, and Spain, about seven days. Okay. So, um, I was just wondering, um, was uh, any of those countries um, something that actually uh, have um, significance as far as the last travel that you had? Well, I would say Israel, because I think, I believe my wife was sending signals that she wanted to visit Israel. So, okay, why not? And then Spain, I'm on the choice of Switzerland versus Spain. I wanted to uh, see Sagrada Familia in Barcelona and the painting of Picasso Guernica in Madrid. So I think that was a determinant of choosing Spain as a choice, mm -hmm. a travel choice. Okay. Was um, Israel what you expected uh, as how it is? I know it was a long flight from, from Chicago. No, Tel Aviv was interesting city because it seems from our perspective from the West uh, very open-minded and very liberal. And then versus Jerusalem, which is the most of the holy sites are in that city it tends to be more solemn, more religious oriented. You will see hundreds of uh, tourists that go there, I believe because whether they're Christians or Jewish or Muslims, the city has some special significance to them. And you will meet people that may have been there four or five times already. So there's a contrast between the two cities, plus the background about Israel per se and everything that is going on there that it seems to go on forever. So that made it, made it interesting too, mm -hmm. to experience that part of what's going on there. Yeah, so um, what do you think about the relig religious aspect of that? Because like, uh, it's uh, something that probably is not uh, you are commonly seeing here in the United States. Well, I, I would say that every church, whether it's the Armenian or the, um, the Christian or the Coptic church or the Jewish or the Muslims, everyone fight for the little piece of um, territory. They, they want to preserve what they believe is important to them. And I recall uh, we went to this church, maybe Holy Sepulchre Church, where there's a, a ladder that has been sitting there for about 200 years and in order to be moved everyone involved needs to be consulted in order to be able to move the ladder one way or the other, they have to be, everyone needs to be consulted. So I, I gather that the ladder just stays in the same place. So th things like that, that you don't expect to, to see here. Plus everyone else that wants to be there and want to see 
the relics or the holy sites, which makes it an interesting experience, to say the least, as someone just going there for the first time and walking around. You know, for instance, La Via Dolorosa. Uh, and some may some people may say, well, you know, that's not real the that's not the real way that they went. They went this other way. And so some other will say, well this is the the way they went, the path they took. So I believe you just uh, as a guest, as a visitor, you just listen to all that and you decide what whether it makes sense or not. <laughs> so did you become a skeptic, more or less? No, I wouldn't say a skeptic, but there are certain things that you would like to think about it a little bit more. You know, for instance, the, uh, there's a footprint of Jesus the Christ in some church. Um, okay, uh, you can look at it and you may see a footprint or not. Or on the path of the Via Dolorosa, there's a s stone or rock there and where they say that Jesus imprinted his uh, hand when he was carrying the cross and he needed to hold himself against the wall. So, the, is it is is that the rock? Is that the, where he? Uh, I don't know. So sometimes you would like to research more, find out more if you can. But I, I believe those are like a leap of faith. If you go there and you believe it, that's it, and there's no issue and nothing to discuss. Some others go and they would like to know a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so, uh, talking about the travel, uh, I recall when uh, we went to Turkey and we went to this uh, Topkapi Palace. Uh, they have relics there too. They have the tooth of Mohammed the beard, some of the beard of Mohammed, the footprint of Mohammed. So you just look at those things that was is there. And then they have a saber sword of King David and you wonder, yeah maybe. And then the thing that caught my attention at that particular place in Turkey was that there's a staff or a stick that Moses used. And that's what really caught my attention. I said, okay, well, unfortunately, you cannot, you're not allowed to take pictures. So well, you look at it and say, well, okay, let's move along. <laughs> so I say it's a leap of faith if you, uh, you want to believe it. Okay. So what advice will you give to those people who are interested in going to Israel? Let's say they're not really uh, religious uh, per se. Just do your homework. Decide where you want to go in advance. There are many holy sites around Israel. You, know, you can cross to the Palestine territories. And there's also some holy sites there. You do your homework, your research, what makes you feel comfortable. Some people may not feel comfortable crossing to the Palestine territories. So it's up to each person and be respectful once you are there. Understanding the situation in Israel, understanding that Jerusalem is a holy city, that three main religions are there. You may agree or not with it, but be respectful because you're a guest and try to understand and be get better acquainted with the culture, the customs, the traditions, learning, growing as a person when you travel and you learn about other countries and other cultures. Mm -hmm. So that's great. So um, did you feel safe when you were in Israel? Well, I would say when, beforehand, when you uh, 
think about it, you say, well, well let's see what happens. <laughs> so hopefully everything will be okay, but you never know. I know some of my uh, friends, when they realize that I was in Israel, some of them would say, well, good luck, or uh, they would make comments about being there. But generally speaking, I would say, yes, I didn't see any major disturbance, any concerns or any issues, any lockdowns. Just be aware of your surroundings, and I believe you that nowadays, whether you travel or whether you're in the USA, be aware of your surroundings. Also, at least in our case, I hire a guide. So we had a private guide in Jerusalem, and he understands, and he can communicate in case that there's a discrepancy or there's an issue, we have someone that is local that can help. I don't think if I have gone there on my own and just say, well, I'm going out today to see what happens by myself, I don't think I would have gone to half of the places that I went. Because it's logistically, you have to do too many things on your own. So we, we had a guide and it was fine, but it's a decision that I made previous to going there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so um, I know that you always ask this uh, every time that we travel. So would you actually like go back to that current country again? Right now, I would say no, because uh, I went there and I saw it. So it wouldn't be a priority for me to go back. I would like to visit other places. So people decide how they want to handle that. Yeah. So um, you have traveled to uh, how many countries now? Um, maybe 20 or 20. I, I don't keep track of it. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't remember, but <laughs> 20, 25, I'm not sure. OK. And so. Um, what are the countries among those 20 that you would probably go back again? I would say in Asia, I would say Japan. Been to Japan twice and I like it. So I would like to continue going, exploring more cities in Japan. Maybe Singapore, Vietnam would be a, a country that I would like to visit. And last but not least, India. But I believe India, you need to spend time because India is a big place. And if you want, you need to move from one place to another, it takes time. Just going to India for four or five days or it, it could be a little bit challenging. So I would say those are the countries in Asia that I would be interested in exploring. Even though I've been to Japan, but I don't mind going back to Japan. On the other side, maybe Iceland, that would be an interesting place to go. Belgium, Netherlands, Luxembourg, the smaller countries like Monaco and Liechtenstein and Andorra, those little places, principalities, I believe they call them principalities. And Maybe in North Africa, at some point, Egypt, Tunisia, Algiers, all the countries in North Africa that face the Mediterranean Sea. And maybe one day Jordan, that would be another place. So you said uh, you've been to Japan twice and then you want to go back. So tell us, like, you know, what did you like about Jap Japan? <laughs> I, I think it's a very structured society, very polite. I don't believe that when you are there, you are concerned about your surroundings, like in other metropolitan areas in the USA and maybe some other cities. So you feel relaxed. Mm. You can go out during the day or at night. And the Japanese tend to be very polite. One thing that I tell other friends when we exchange 
information about traveling is that you know, you t we took the bullet train from Tokyo to Kyoto and you have the one of the employees going in from different wagons in the train and they go in and they bow when they step in they do what they need to do and then when they leave they bow again you will never see that here so I always find that fascinating the bowing and the respect that is shown by doing that so the least you can do is bow back <laughs> to them and also I they are very respectful so it's a place that I feel comfortable going and trying to understand the idiosyncrasy as a country. Okay. And so um, were you fascinated by their history as well? Because I know you like history. Well, they, they have a, a longer history than uh, other, other places. And I know that maybe for three, four hundred years they were isolated from the most of the world. They did their own thing in Japan until the 19th century when they started maybe trading with USA and uh, other places like that. So it's a fascinating history. At least when I was growing up our history lessons were oriented towards the uh, Europe mm. because most of the, our influence is European. Uh, the the Greeks or the Romans and then the discovery of the new world for the Europeans and the East at least in my history classes it was very brief they would say China was called Katai and Japan was Sipangu and Marco Polo went there and it was very brief in, in my history classes uh, back then maybe now it's different so we really don't get a understanding of the East unless you read or you travel and you're open-minded everything it tends to be like West Europe you know the main places you know Italy Greece uh, Great Britain, France, maybe Spain. And I believe nowadays people are beginning to explore more, maybe a different generation. People t are going out and exploring. So? Yeah, so uh, I like the idea that you're saying that, you know, it's uh, you don't mind anything um, when you're going to Japan because it feels like, you know, safe. So uh, will you go to Afghanistan? Maybe one day, <laughs> uh, but I have to look at my list of uh, travel priorities. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe one day. Okay. Well, then if it, uh, it had its history too, but I don't know whether that would be feasible. No, but seriously, I would like to go to Russia too. I like, I would like to St. Petersburg or Moscow, but I think it's gonna take a while for me to go there yeah but I hope that one day I can do it so uh, so for now like um, the country where it's not peaceful is like you know um, Russia is uh, one of those places that you want to go to because like obviously there are a lot of countries which are not peaceful right now well Russia because of its history but because of the current situation what well, everything that is going on around Russia uh, I would I think uh, I would be concerned mm -hmm. if I w decide to go there. Mm -hmm. I would be concerned. But, but I, you always hope that in the future things will get better and it will be easier to to travel there. Yeah, but you step uh, in North Korea, right? Yes, <laughs> when you go to the uh, the militarized zone between North Korea and South Korea. Yeah, they take you to this uh, United Nations building and they tell you, well, you can walk around. And when you walk around, you actually walking in North Korea. But I don't, 
I, I don't count that as really being in North Korea because it's a safe zone. Yeah, you look outside and you see that uh, those uh, bricks dividing North Korea and South Korea. But, and you say, well, I'm here in North Korea, and then I'm here now South Korea. But I don't think that really counts, that I can say, well, I was in North Korea. But I wouldn't count it. Mm -hmm. So uh, do you have any measures that you uh, look into in order to uh, make sure that there's safety in your travels? As I say, just be uh, aware of your surroundings whenever you travel. Because people, no matter where you at, people will try to take advantage of you. Some people will try to take advantage of you. And you know, they are smart. They're s they know, they, they look around, they know who is a foreigner, who is a local. And if they see you there like hesitating or unsure, or they will try to uh, not, not a big uh, criminal act, but you no know, petty theft or take your things away. No, I talking about that. I recall in uh, we went to this town in Norway, Stavanger, and we were in the train station, and we needed to walk to the hotel that we, it wasn't that far. And uh, two women came with uh, babies. No, I went out to exchange currency. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe they stayed with you. They, they, they showed up there. When I came back, they were just uh, talking. And it, they happened, they were uh, from uh, South America. Mm -hmm. So I talked to them in Spanish. And I was asking about where is the hotel? Can you pinpoint? And we say goodbye and we I started walking towards the hotel because it wasn't that far. And they w they follow us. And then I asked one of them, the one that I was talking to, if they needed any help. or And, and she said, OK, uh, I was going to show you a shortcut to go to the hotel. And I found that kind of odd that she wanted to take us through a shortcut. And I said, well, don't worry about it. The hotel is nearby. Thank you. But maybe she did it in good faith because you know, we were both uh, Hispanics. Or maybe there was a, you think maybe it's a trick. Maybe they have other friends over there waiting for us. So you don't know, but that's life. Uh, you have to be, I guess, street smart and be sure. And sure uh, so it happens. Yeah. Outsmart the smart. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for being over here. Like I'm sure a lot of people have learned some nuggets in order to uh, make sure that they're safe and also like, you know, what are, you know, the expectation that you can actually um, get uh, in a certain place. And uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, it corresponds to your particular belief. And so like it's up to you in order to uh, believe it or not. So. Thank you so much. And then uh, for those people who are actually watching, um, if you are a travel enthusiast, you can be your own Samantha Brown, Rick Steves, or uh, Joseph Rosendo over here with your own twist. And um, if you are a um, travel agent or you have your own travel company, we would like to have you over here because like, you know, we want to get some nuggets as well uh, from you that we can learn from. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you and bye-bye. Thank you.